All right, if you're just opening up ZBrush 2020 or later, you and I don't know if this is going to be part of the preferences or not, but if you hit the comma key, well, before we go hit the comma key, or if you need to see Lightbox, hit the comma key, and we'll go into Tool, and we'll go ahead and load up, say, the Dog Z Tool. Then we'll hit the comma key to get rid of Lightbox. Go ahead and drag that out on our canvas and go into Edit Mode. So now you're probably going to see two new things. You're going to have a thumbnail view up here. You're going to have a cam view up here. Now, again, for ZBrush 2020, this is the default. If you don't see them, this is where you're going to find them. So if I uh, double click this little docking station over to the left, these little double arrows, we can close out the brush menu in here, go into preferences, drag this little white dot over here, and you're going to see we have cam view and thumbnail. We'll start with cam view. Cam view is this uh, item up here. If I hit next, it's probably going to look something more like this, or maybe this. And basically what it is, is it orients you in ZBrush space. So instead of having to go over here to the floor, uh, and by default the Y, uh, your floor might be down here, but the Y uh, will be uh, on by default, you can turn on these little different axes. The Y axis is up and down, the green arrow, so that's the floor. You can see Z is forward, X is side to side, and then Y is up and down. So instead of having to turn that on to orient yourself in Z space, you can see the cam view can kind of orient you. So you know a skull when it's looking to the front is the front. Now I'll go ahead and turn perspective off, or you can just hover over this. You can see that's P to turn that on and off. And if I want to go to the side view, I can go in my document, I can hold down shift, and I can snap to these orthographic views. Or I can go up here, I can just rotate on this cam view. You're also going to see in some of those cam views, it has arrows. So you can go to the left arrow, bottom arrow, front arrow. And if you tap it twice, it'll go front to back, top to bottom, left to right. You can go over here to the cam view preferences. You can crank up the size if you want to see it a little bit bigger, you want to see it a little bit smaller. You can turn it on and off, and if you turn it off, all you got to do is go up here to Config, Store Config, and it'll be off every time you load up ZBrush. And if it's on, you can go through and you can cycle Next. And there you go, there's actually a dog in here. So again, as we keep hitting Next, you're going to see a bunch. Now, you're, uh, you might be wondering, you know, why, why would you want a bigger version of the cam view? And you'll see an example of that. As you're tumbling in here and you're maybe doing a head sculpt and you want to see the muscles of the head, you can use that as a reference right up here. And if you want to see the making of this, if you go to my YouTube channel or my Gumroad page, there's a ZBrush 2020 What's New, and you can go through here, and I go through several videos of kind of fine-tuning this, adding your own arrows. I'm not going to bloat ZBrush for concept and ideation with a bunch of cam view stuff. It's interesting, but more than anything, you just need to know what the functionality of this is. However, really quickly, if you do want to make your own, like uh, we already have a dog in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the comma key. And let's go to our project tab, and we'll just double click this demo anime head. And now we have this demo anime head in our scene. So you're going to see right down here under cam view, you're going to see a make cam view. All you got to do is hit that button. There's a couple things to think about before you do that. Number one, if you have the floor turned on, it's going to capture that floor in your cam view. If you want any poly paint or materials applied to this object, go ahead and do that, just like this one. And if you want it transparent around the object, you got to go up here to document. Click on back and then drag and just go to a black area or choose black in your colors there. So we'll go ahead and I will also turn off perspective. So while we're in the orthographic view, it's a nice straight on shot. So turn off floor, turn off perspective, make your doc background document black. And one more thing you need to do, go down here to deformation and hit this unify button. It's not going to do anything to this because it's already in the middle of the scene. But essentially what unify is going to do is put the object right smack dab in the middle of ZBrush world 000. So then when it's taking the pictures of the cam view, it's just going to cycle correctly. If it's way up in space, if you hit the W key and just move it up here, uh, and you try to use cam view, you're going to see world spaces down here. It's not going to work that well. If you have multiple subtools, go over here to subtool, merge, visible. And in fact, let's pick a little bit more of a challenging object now that I say that. Let's go into tool here, and we'll double click the demo soldier. And now to make sure this is all unified, which he may be, uh, I would go down here to Deformation Unify, but it's only going to do it for the active subtool. You see it's going to be uh, already unified. And unifying really is just to center on world 000. I could cam view this guy and he'd probably be fine because he is centered on that world axis. But just to play it safe, what I'm going to do really quickly is just go over here to Merge Visible. And I'm going to go grab this Merge Demo Soldier. I'm going to go back down here to Deformation Unify. Just hit Unify. And then I'm going to hit this Make Cam View. It's going to go ahead and make my cam view, and now I have a demo soldier. Again, if you want to see how to put arrows on your screen or go into Photoshop and make arrows, you can go watch that on my YouTube channel. If you want to save this out, all you got to do is go over here to Texture, Export, go to your C program files, Pixelogic ZBrush 2020, Z Startup, because it's going to start up every time you launch ZBrush, so this is, cam view is going to be in there. You're going to see there's a bunch of cam view in here, so we can go ahead and name this demo soldier.psd. And then we'll go ahead and go over here to turn texture off. And then now 
If you go up here to config, store config, you'll always have your demo soldier show up. Or if you want to just make it this different size, just click on that and just type in 128. Or if you don't want to see it at all, just turn it off. And then again, go up here and store config. Next up, we got thumbnail. Just like cam view, you can just turn the th thumbnail on or off. Uh, to make it larger or smaller, you can go up here. You can, there's two ways to do it. You can make the size bigger or smaller. And you see, when you use size, that actually stay, capes, uh, stays nice and crispy. Very uh, high resolution. Magnify will kind of over crank it. You'll start getting some aliasing, but you can really uh, magnify that up. You can also just click and drag in here and resize it. You're going to see uh, up here it says thumbnail size, and also down here it's going to change the thumbnail size on the fly. Anything you have in your scene, is going to be viewed in your thumbnail. In fact, if we go back to the demo soldier with 11 subtools, you're going to see if I turn on transparent, it's only going to show like the vest, for example. Even though I'm not in solo mode, it'll only show the vest. However, you can also go into solo mode, and as you click through your subtools, it'll only show the selected subtool. As well as if you turn off transparent, you turn off solo, you hold down shift and turn off these eyeballs. Um, again, you can just kind of cycle through these just through visibility, and the only ones visible are going to end up showing up. Go ahead and done shift and turn this eyeball back on so we can turn them all back on. And then let's kind of work our way through these options. So we already talked about thumbnail on or off. And again, if you want the thumbnail to never show up, uh, just thumbnail, store config, you're good to go. Uh, silhouette, you can turn on and off. So if you want to see the actual model, you can go through here and you can just look at the model instead of just the silhouette. We already talked about size, either clicking and dragging or making a bigger or smaller down here. And of course, magnify. You can see there's an export thumbnail. So if you go in here and export, uh, you can just export this as a PNG file. Or a PSD, JPEG, PNG, BM, PN, uh, TIFF, I should say. And you're going to see a background over here. So you click on the background and just click and drag around. Uh, you can change it to whatever color you want. Now, while you're in silhouette mode, as you're changing the background color, the object color is going to change as well to the complementary of that color. So if you click on background and start changing this, you're going to see it's just going to choose the complement of that color. Now, if you go to pure black, and let's go up here to document, change our background color to just a medium gray, you're going to see it's going to be a transparent silhouette. If you want, you can make, instead of pure black, you can choose a very, very dark gray, and uh, you can have it be a white on a black silhouette. Now, your thumbnail proportions are controlled by your document proportions, so if you want it to be square, go in here, turn off Pro, we'll make this top one 953, hit Enter, hit Resize. Hit yes, hit control N to clear your canvas, drag your object back out, and then you'll see you'll get a nice square thumbnail. You can also click once on the thumbnail. That's going to bring up the texture import window. So you can go through here and you can import a texture. And once you've selected it, it's going to end up as your background image. So if you're trying to match something with your silhouette, you can just load an image in there. You can alt drag to pan the image around, or let uh, while you're panning around, just let go of alt, and you can also zoom it in and out. And if you want to get rid of that, just click on it once and say texture off. We'll go ahead and switch this back. So the background we're going to say is white again. And if you want to take a snapshot of your canvas, you can control click on it. That's going to take a snapshot of your canvas. And then if you see, I slowly turn this around. It's going to leave that snapshot of my canvas behind. So it's going to take the image of your document and just snapshot it right in there. And of course, you can just treat it like any other texture. So if you want to go through and you want to just have this little snapshot available to you, uh, you just throw it up there and then you can keep working. Or you can, again, control click and store another uh, snapshot of your image. And of course, you can go in here, turn off silhouette, and now while you're working, you can have something from your document that you could maybe want to match up. That's the basics of CamView and Thumbnail. If you want to take a deeper dive in CamView, go check that out on my YouTube channel. And of course, if you want to have all these off, just turn them off and then go into Preferences, Store Config, and then every time you start up ZBrush, those will both be off for you.